Um, thank you, Jamie. Um, okay, now let me share. There we go. This program started out as a 30 minute program about, I might age myself, about 11 years ago. I had someone ask me, could you put something together about the holidays and dementia? And now, honest to goodness, about 90 minutes, we're going to make it fit into 60. So I'm going to go through this fast. But again, you're going to get all of the information. And can you believe it? It's already November 1st. So this is information about us here at the West Center. For those of you who are needing your CEs, there's your objectives. There's our course outline. And let's jump right in. And hopefully when you get these slides, you're going to share them with family as well. Because you may have family and friends that you know you're going to see or come around your loved one with dementia that maybe hasn't seen your loved one in a while. So we always review communication just as a review to pass on to other people and as a reminder for us. We never want to use the word remember around somebody with dementia because we're reminding them that they forgot and that can cause a challenging behavior or what we're now calling an expression, a challenging expression. We always want to use the word okay, regardless of what they say. All okay means is I heard you. It's validation therapy 101. You're the one that took my money, okay. Let me call them. So use the word okay, fix it. And sometimes we have to fix it with a therapeutic story like I just did. Let me call the bank. I'm not really calling the bank. I'm calling my cell phone or I'm calling somebody else. And then we're going to distract, distract, distract. And we can typically, if we can get on top, if we can see them kind of ramping up or changing, if we can offer food, music, those are the top two, and the sweeter, the better. We know that people with dementia, their tastes are changing, but boy, do the sweet stay. So, and there's going to be lots of sweets during the holidays. Music is their music. Holiday music is usually really good. Now, please don't get to thinking, oh, my loved one never liked holiday music. Please try it this year because They've also never been in the same position they've been in right now. They've never been at this place in dementia. And as dementia progresses and that right side of the brain remains intact a little longer than the left, rhythm is held over there. Something with a beat is held over there. And we've known Christmas carols and hymns since we were little bitty. And for most people, they remain. You might be surprised. So distraction food and music and animals and children and darned if they're in the picture of my grandkids up there i don't know how that happened but that top picture there's my grandbabies with the little girl holding the little boy so you have to slip those in when you can so animals and children and if you don't have real animals and children go to youtube and put in baby animals falling down that video right there of those little ducks trying to get on a curb there or put in children laughing and it's a great thing also just a reminder they don't usually see a phone very well that screen's too small try to use something at least the size of an ipad that's a reminder before we jump right into the holidays and it's a reminder again with all of this information share this with your family and friends we're going to start and we're going to cover lots. We're going to do gifts, we're going to do feelings. We're going to talk about how to include our loved one. We're going to start with gift ideas for somebody with dementia. Because people will say, just how many pairs of slippers can they have? So let's think about things related to the disease. I've already mentioned music. Special songs from their past that's associated with good memories. Keep in mind that everyone has a music set, and that music set is our age from 10 to 25. So if you can think back, what was their music between 10 and 25? And go and find them CDs from that era. If they were a teenager in the 60s or the 70s, get a compilation of music. Those are always great. I've had some people, and I'm going to show you some great pictures, take old album covers and make a collage to hang on the wall. That's going to be next. We'll look at it. And then collage photos, and I'm going to show you some of those, and photo books with captions. So let's take a look here. This picture that's on the upper left, 
This was actually a frame. You used to be able to buy it at Kirkland's and look how perfect that is. It's a family tree. I actually had a resident who had one of these one time and he was well past being, he had um, aphasia. He could no longer speak, but his family had written in, you see where you can write in names there. They wrote in, so for example, where the dad is, it said, my dad, Tom, my mom, Jane, his relation to all the people on the tree. He would study it. He put his, he, he would pull people in to look at it. He loved it because it was his story. Now, another thing with photos, don't put originals in there. Always make a copy because I've also had people take them apart and then there goes your only original photo of great, great grandpa or whoever it is. Now on that frame next to it, the black frame, you can make your own and use a label maker and do the same thing on those black frames. You can just use a label maker and label it. Down in the lower left, this is a book you can make at Walgreens, you can make them online, you can make them at CVS, and you upload your photos and then you tell the story. Now, we want to tell the story of the grandkids, just like I had pictures of my grandkids. They need to read the story of life. We want to go in and decorate their room and bring them pictures of the grandkids, but who are these precious babies? They're going to recognize mom and dad brothers and sisters, cousins, aunts and uncles, because those are people that's always been in their life. Keep that in mind. On the lower right is an example of that collage made out of record albums. It's amazing. I saw somebody do that where they just put them all together on the wall. Other holiday gifts ideas for the person with dementia. Things to sort, especially if it is their stuff. That's why I got this old beat up toolbox there. But the family had gone through all the tools, they got rid of anything dangerous, and they put together their toolbox. And that gentleman who got his toolbox with all of these plastic containers would sit and sort and go through nuts and bolts and screws and nails and all. That's how he would spend his day. They'd go and mix it up again. He loved doing it. He had a purpose. He had a reason. Same thing with sewing kits. You can do the same with sewing. Anything for rummaging or that stimulates their senses. And then large games. So I'll show you some examples of these. There's uh, buttons and yarn in a basket. You can get cards that are 10 times the size of a real card and a solemn at Dollar General just a few weeks ago. They've got some. There's a toss across. Uh, game. They make giant Jenga. They make giant um, Connect Four. There's giant all kinds of games. It's easier for them as they're losing their fine motor skills. Other things you can do with your loved one that has dementia is to get them picture books, but as adults, we call them coffee table books. And at this time of year, they're everywhere. Barnes and Noble has some beautiful ones. Amazon has great ones, but my favorite place, half price books. So then if they cut them up, it's all right. Because lots of times they'll take those books and then they want to make their own book. And that's okay too, because it's giving them something to do. Coffee table books are fantastic for people with dementia because they're large. They have big pictures. There's not a words and it's something you can do together now as we're sitting and doing this with our loved one we're not going to go through saying do you remember do you remember my go-to is i was thinking about the time that we but not following up with do you remember doing models together like the birdhouses or making gifts for other people so let me show you some examples they can help put together fruit baskets and they might be able to do things like these tie blankets you can get these tie blankets at michael's and joann's and hobby lobby if they still are usually in the earlier stages you just lay them on top of each other you tie them we used to do them in our day program a lot, and then we'd go donate them. We donated them to Cook's Children's. We donated them to the animal shelters, but they had a purpose and a reason. There's some of those coffee table books. I've got one there of Tampa, and then there's a list. Helicopters, um, places you want to travel, art, horses. I've got an Ann Gettys book on babies. Oh, my goodness, looking at little babies dressed up like little flowers. 
Those ornaments down there in the lower right, they're easy stitches. So again, somebody in the earlier stages might be able to just make that you can see the stitches around it. And then we're gonna give those away to the grandkids. We're gonna give those away to people at church. A few other things, noise canceling headphones. So if they are having a hard time um, filtering out background noise, you can get them noise canceling headphones for when they're watching TV. Sensory stimulation pads or pillows or blankets. I'm also going to give you some places to buy these. A nostalgia or reminiscent card set. I bought some on Amazon and there's a picture there in the lower left that's all about cars. And these, car, they're like five by sevens and there's a car and there's some basic information about it. Oh, those are so much fun. And you can get some of the best conversations going with reminiscence cards. I'm going to show you some more in a little bit. Weighted or heated blankets. Uh, we have found that people with dementia many times do well with the very light weighted because it makes me feel comfortable or in a cocoon. And with the heated blankets, just make sure that they are not the kind that you can turn up to a real high setting. Most of them will turn off at some point. Just be careful about those. Or heated throws. There's a lot of heated throws out there right now. Here's some examples of some stimu that I've got it right here. They're sensory stimulation pads. And again, I'm going to give you where you can get these. They're filled with water. I used to use these a lot in the day program. And there's some that are filled with kinetic sand. And there's something about, and I'll tell you the truth, the staff played with them as much as the residents did. We loved it. It's just keeping your hands busy and pushing things around. They've got some with neon colors. In the upper right, I love these also. Look at that painting that's coming up. That's a blue jay that's coming up. But you're not using real paint. You're just using water. And so you use water and you put it on this paper. And again, I'm going to show you where to get these. And these beautiful pictures come up. And they're not childlike. They don't look like anything for a child. And then the lady there in the chair, that's a fidget pillow. You've heard of fidget blankets or fidget pads. That's a fidget pillow where there are zippers and there's buttons and there's things to open and there's Velcro. Here's some other kits that you can find. This one in the upper left, that's a bunch of PVC pipe. And I'm fixing and I'm working and I'm putting things together. Keeps my hands busy. I have a purpose and a reason. I'm build something. There's some of the little poppets. You see those all over stores right now. A lot of times folks with dementia just like to sit and fidget with those. In that lower left, this is actually all different kinds of colors and fabrics with different textures. And it is amazing how long a person can sit and just go through each of those over and over and over again. Now, what works today might not work tomorrow. And what works in two weeks might not work in six months. But these are things to try. And then don't just put them up. Try them again later. And some of you may remember when we were young, I remember doing these lace cards, but they look childlike. These don't look childlike. And you can be making them. You put the laces, they've got vegetables, they've got fruit, they've got scenery. And again, that's for someone that has a little more of the fine motor skills left. Later in the disease, I am not a big baby doll fan, but later in the disease, lots of times, especially women, need something to take care of. They make some very, very realistic looking babies. Those are dolls you're looking at. That one in the upper left I know looks very, very real, but it's a doll made specific for someone with dementia. Those two I actually found on Amazon. All the rest of that stuff, I'm going to give you the website on the next slide. And then you can take a photo and turn it into a pillow. So you see the one that is the, the cat's face. Now, for some people, that might scare them. But I've also had some folks um, make pillows of pictures of them together. We had a gentleman who his wife took a picture of her own face. It was just like a head and shoulders and put it on a pillow and he slept with it because he was placed here. So those kind of ideas as well. And you can do that. There's all kinds of places online where you can make your own uh, pillows out of photos. So holiday gifts ideas for the person with dementia. We're about to finish up on this. Quilts made from familiar materials. There's people who make t-shirt quilts. I had one made for my daughter with all of her OU t-shirts and they just made her a quilt out of her t-shirts. And you can uh, Google t-shirt quilts and probably find someone local. That's what I did. 
puzzles or coloring sheets of themselves. You can actually, and again, CVS, Walgreens, there's things you can do online where you take a photo and you turn it into a coloring sheet or a puzzle. Uh, devotional books to read together at night. If you're not reading with your loved one, a lot of folks, this is what they use as they go to bed at night. They read a devotion together. Chicken Soup for the Soul is a great book to read together. Those things are two, three pages long. Therapy Robotic Pets is what you're looking at in these pictures. These are not the fur real pets like you get at Walmart. These are actually therapy robotic pets that are made specifically for people with dementia. Um, TV ears are very similar to the uh, head, the sound canceling headphone, but there's the website of where you can get a lot of this. It's called SSWW. It's SNS Worldwide. If you type in dementia in their search bar, they've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of things. I used to order from there all the time when I uh, did the day program. And you can get them on there and they're really reasonably priced. Now, sometimes I'll look on there and then go look on Amazon. I mentioned things made out of familiar material. This is actually bears and pillows made out of someone's clothes that was made. And lots of times this is for family. They like having these items. Here's the bears up close where they found somebody who could sew and they made bears for the family out of their clothes. And then these are brand new. This is a, an old car on that mask and a family shared these with me. They took their loved one's shirts that they weren't wearing anymore. And she made masks when we were all wearing masks. And then those are his ties. She made a wreath out of his ties because he wasn't gonna use his ties anymore. And they just got creative and it was a way to keep their loved one close with them. Next, I want to talk about something called Christmas in a Bag, and this came straight from a caregiver in a support group, as a lot of this has. Like I said, this went from a 30-minute program to a 90-minute program over the years. She used to go in to visit her husband, and she would tell the story that he just wasn't, because time doesn't mean the same thing. In fact, time doesn't mean anything as the disease progresses. So she never knew when he was going to be up for Christmas, so she started bringing Christmas in a Bag. Uh, throughout the month of December, she would sh just show up with a bag. It had a small little decorated tree. She had the paper plates and cups, and she had a few little wrapped gifts, and she would get these little Debbie Christmas uh, that we all love if you hadn't had those. Wow, those are good. Little dessert cakes, and she would try when she'd come, and sometimes he didn't want anything to do with it, and other times he was all about it, and they would have Christmas that day. Even if it was December 1st, December 5th, December 15th, who cares? Because he might not want to do this on the 25th. But she found a way. Her husband was placed for many, many years, and this was her idea. So I wanted to share that. Holiday gifts ideas for the caregiver, things that we could use as a caregiver. And if people ask us, what could I get for you? What could I do? Tell them. That's how you get people to help you. Gift certificates to things like salons and spawns and restaurants and massage. And now they make them for DoorDash and Grubhub so they can get you a gift certificate and then you can just get whatever you want. Offering to stay with our loved one while we go and use the gift certificate. Ready-made meals or enrolling you in something like a HelloFresh. They can get, there's different uh, subscriptions you can get for it. And then time, if they will come and stay with our loved one for an afternoon once every other week. You can buy gift certi certificates for respite care or for adult day programs. You can get gift certificates for that. Another thing we sometimes need is that listening ear. Or why don't the two of us go out and let's get somebody to watch my loved one. And then favors. Go buy the groceries, mow the lawn, clean the house, bring a Bible study over, uh, take the dog to the vet, those type of things. Let's go to how we can still include our loved one in the holidays. Now, keep in mind, we're another year into a progressive disease. What last year looked like is probably not going to be what this year looks like. And you're going to have to be the one to change and adapt. We change and adapt. They can't. So what are some things we might try? Let's try these. And if they can't do it, let's adapt it. And then I'll tell you the story of somebody who adapted some things. 
let them hang the ornaments on the tree. Who cares if they're all right here? They all might be right here in this foot section. We'll fix it after they go to bed. But the worst thing we can do is say, I don't need your help. Go over there and sit down. What do we just say to them? You're not doing it right. I don't need you. I'm worthless. That's what they're going to hear because that amygdala is still intact. Let them put the ornaments on the tree. Let them set the table. Who cares if everybody's got three forks and it doesn't matter. Those things don't matter. Sealing and making holiday cards. I'm going to tell you a story on that in a minute. Stir the batter and mixes in the kitchen. You don't have to use what they're stirring. But let them be in the kitchen while you're cooking and let them be part of it so I'm useful and I'm needed. You can always be stirring also and you're going to use yours. But let them be there because we're really bad about going, I'll just put them in here in the front of the TV. But everybody else is in the kitchen cooking. They need to be where they can smell and the camaraderie. If they want it, they'll let you know if they don't. Sing and listen to carols and hymns from the past. Watch an old holiday movie, something from the past. See if they want to watch It's a Wonderful Life. Talk about that. Now, here is a, I'm going to share this story of what one daughter did, the progression of her mother. So when she first, when I first knew her, the daughter came, they sat right out in front of my office and they did their holiday cards together. The daughter said they'd always done the holiday cards together. The daughter would sign it. Mom would sign it. They do it together. They had it down to an art. Well, the next year, the mom couldn't sign her name anymore. She couldn't write. So the daughter, we sat and we thought she went and bought some Christmas stamps, like you stamp them on there. The daughter signed it, handed it to her mom, and her mom put those stamps all over that card. The next year, her mama couldn't do the stamps. In fact, the next year, her mama was calling her mama. And she had told me, I think I'm just going to do them at home. And we talked through, how can you still include her? This is a tradition. This is something. We're just changing the tradition. So we put on... I remember exactly the record we put on. We put on Christmas, uh, Blue Blue Christmas, Elvis. We put on Elvis's famous Christmas album on the record player. And her mama listened to music and watched her do the Christmas cards and was perfectly content. She was still part of it. Did the daughter have to change? Yes. But was she still able to include her mother? Absolutely. Other ideas, watching or attending a religious service. If that has always been something you've done, still try it. And if you're not going out to the service, almost everybody does services online. And if your church doesn't, you can find a church that does. Let them put the bows on the gifts. Go for walks with family members that are in. Go and see holiday lights. Do the drive through lights. Those are very popular right now. I mentioned reminiscence cards earlier. And part of reminiscence is talking about maybe gifts from the past. At the bottom here, I've got this book. It's called 50s Rewind, 70s Rewind, 60s Rewind. Those are reminiscent books that you can buy. And you they're the size of a magazine. And as you turn the pages, they're these big, beautiful color photos of cars, celebrities, politics, sports, things that were in our home in the 1960s, 70s, 50s. Um, they're great to use for conversation starters. Let them string popcorn if that's something that they can do or make paper chains out of garland if they still have the ability, the fine motor skills. Read some holiday books aloud. Uh, you may be the one reading. They may still be able to read. Let them get out and do something physical like rake leaves if they want to. There is dignity with risk. We've got to remember that. We tend to want to wrap our loved one in bubble wrap and sit them in the recliner and lean them back. What kind of life is that? Would you want somebody doing that to you? Make paper snowflakes with the kids when they come over. We're going to talk about later. If we don't scare kids about dementia, they usually are the best around people with dementia. We're the ones that scare them. Let them polish the silver. 
sit there and even if they polish on the same spoon for 45 minutes who cares making floral arrangements wrapping gifts if that's something they can do or collecting pine cones if you live somewhere where you've got pine cones that's always fun things to do when we don't feel like doing christmas now this slide came about again from support group when people i'm just not going to do christmas this year i don't feel like it what's some other things we could do have the grandkids come over and decorate the house have the kids come over and decorate the house. You don't have to do everything. Make it an event. Also, this came from a support group member. If your loved one doesn't want to do any of the things, ask them to supervise it. This was wonderful last year. One of the support group members said they were decorating the houses here at the West Center and they were trying to get her husband to be involved. And he ended up telling them that he would rather just supervise. Ask them if they'd rather oversee. I'm going to work on the tree. Am I doing this right? Does this look like the place to put it? Because what they might be telling us is I can't do it. I can't. But I can tell you if you're doing it right or not. And then if you don't feel like decorating your house, have some friends come over. A woman mentioned this last year. She said, we called it wine and decorations. And they got some wine together and her friends helped her decorate the house because she just didn't feel like doing it. But once it was done and the tree was up and the stockings were hung and every, she was like, okay, it's Christmas. We're in a different place, but it's Christmas. Again, this year is going to be different from last year. You're in a new place. Your loved one's in a new place. And neither one of you have been here before. It's really hard to understand how they're going to respond to the holidays. But keep in mind, we accommodate the disease. They can't. They would if they could. We want to keep things simple. We always talk about Jamie and I teach KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it super simple. And Jamie always adds, and sane. Keep it super simple and sane. Too much stimulation may not go over well. We've got to meet them where they are. Don't try to bring them to our realities. So if you're going to do family gatherings, and we're going to talk about family gatherings at home, and we're going to talk about family gatherings when someone is placed, and I'm watching my time. Because again, this is a lot. I know I'm going fast, but you're going to get these slides. Prepare your visitors. This is where, as the advocate for your loved one, as the voice for your loved one, you have to prepare any visitors that are going to come. Let them know where your loved one is at this point in the disease. You've got to be honest with them. This is going to be best for your loved one. It's going to be best for your visitors. And it's going to be best for you too. Tell them directly and tell them clearly how they've changed emotionally, mentally, and physically. For example, if they have become incontinent, if they are wearing briefs, if they are having accidents, just let them know ahead of time so that nobody makes a big deal out of it. And then everybody knows what a therapeutic story is. So if somebody does get up and the chair is wet, oh my goodness, somebody must have spilled something in that chair. How did that happen? Let's get that cleaned up. And we're not making a big deal out of it. Some people can be afraid of being left alone with a person with dementia, and it's because they don't know what to do. That's why people back off. Friends and family so many times back off because they're nervous and they don't know what to say. So just stay close by. If there's people who are visiting that maybe hadn't been around your loved one in a while, they will take their lead from you. So the way you talk to your loved one, the way you interact with their loved one, they'll take their lead from you. Also, give people heads up on uh, any challenging expressions or behaviors that you may have seen and how to kind of divert from that. Have plenty of ice cream in the freezer. Have plenty of co Christmas cookies back there. Have plenty of whatever you use with your loved one. And encourage them to call or email you with any questions they have and truly be an open book. Send them this slideshow if you need to. Direct them to our YouTube page. Let them get educated. Tips for gathering, again, keep it super simple. Don't eat or drink too much. And this is for us also. 
uh, we've got to be careful about taking care of ourselves during the holidays as well. We've got to balance um, what we're eating and drinking, which might be different from what we're used to doing. Make sure you both still are getting rest and try to stay on your schedule as much as possible and respect your loved one. Respect your loved one, respect their routine and respect their schedule. Try to celebrate in their most familiar setting because traveling can cause some anxiety. Now, we're going to talk about traveling if you choose to do that, but try to celebrate in their most familiar setting. So if they are placed, that is their most familiar setting. And sometimes taking them out of the nursing home or out of the assisted living or out of the dementia care facility can trigger some of those challenging expressions. Now, can it be done? Yes, but have a plan B. And plan B is you're bringing them back. And that's all right. Nobody's going to judge. Nobody's going to think anything of it. Now, here's another thing. Take turns with family members spending time with your loved one rather than everybody trying to engage at one time. That is a recipe for disaster. So let's say you've got, let's just say we've got 10 people over at the house. Your loved one probably doesn't need to be in the room with 10 people, nine of whom they hadn't seen in a long time. Again, there's exceptions, but that many times is going to trigger. There's too much going on, too many people, too many sounds, too many, and I can't filter out all this background noise, and it can trigger a catastrophic reaction, honestly. Let them stay in their spot. They're used to being in their chair in this area, and I'm going to go in one at a time, maybe two at a time, and visit and come back out. Or if the ladies are in the kitchen, then she's going to be in the kitchen with the ladies and the men are going to be over here. Keep those groups smaller, but still let them interact. I mentioned earlier about children. Trust children. They usually know exactly how to be around people with dementia. We've got little bitty kids. I've got pictures all over my office of tiny little children with folks with dementia. They do fine. Don't worry about children. They bring pleasure. They bring joy. Don't scare them. Because I've seen too many kids come in and get against the wall with their eyes this big because of what an adult said to them. Now, this year is going to be difficult for you. It will be. Because many times during the holidays is when we start concentrating on loss. Because it kind of, we're with them all the time and there's subtle changes. But then here comes Thanksgiving. Or even Halloween can prompt it in some people. Christmas really does. And we sit there and go, oh my gosh, look how they've changed since last year. Last Thanksgiving Day, and we start listing, they can't, they can't, they can't. They were still using all of their utensils. They were not incontinent. They were still, and we, even though it is going to cross your mind, we can't hang there. We've got to focus on what they can do and meet them there, make the connection so that we can have joy and dementia. That's something that's going to happen to you. So try very hard to remain present. Try very hard to remain here and now. Give yourself time to grieve that because that's what it is, is you're grieving the way it used to be. But you've got to take care of your own physical and emotional needs as well. Make sure that you have some time alone at some point. Always have a plan B because many times things are not going to go as planned. I even recommend a plan C. Plan B and C are always good. And again, some things that can add to the being overstimulated are decorations, festivities, presents, and new people. So you might try it. Because I've had people who start with Christmas lights on the tree and they have to turn the lights off, but they still have the tree up and it's okay. That's not everybody, but it's some people. Focus on the connections this year. Keep the decorations simple. Um, I had a gentleman also whose wife had always, always their whole marriage, she had a cornucopia and they were all candles. Everything in there was a candle. Until this year, it looked like an apple. It smelled like an apple. He took a big old bite out of it. 
And she said, but he's never done that before. And I said, right, because he's never been in this place with dementia. Also had a gentleman who started seeing white mice all over the floor. White mice, white mice, white mice. And we figured out it was white running lights on the Christmas tree. And as the sun went down and there were shadows, they would look like white mice on the floor. So just be careful about that. The tree didn't bother him. It was the lights. Okay, if your loved one is placed, let's do a couple of things about if your loved one is placed. Make sure that visitors know what to expect because we have so many folks who show up twice a year or once a year and every six months, our loved one's changing. It might be a small change. It might be a big change, but they're changing. This is a progressive disease. Remind them to not do this. I've seen this a million times. They'll get real close to their face and go, do you remember me? He doesn't know who I am. And they're right there in their face. I have seen that so many times. So remind them how to greet. Hi, Aunt Mary. It's good to see you again. I am in from town. Um, I brought my friend so-and-so, introduced themselves. I hadn't seen you in so long. And to be prepared for him to say, I don't know you. That's all right, too. Well, I know you, and I love you, and I brought you a Whataburger, or I brought you some Brahms or an ice cream or whatever. And don't be afraid to cut your visit short. I don't care that you drove two hours. If they're not having it today, then we're not having it today. We're not going to force somebody with dementia to sit there and visit if it's aggravating or upsetting them. Cut it short. Come back in 30 minutes. Come back in an hour. And be realistic that traditions may no longer work. You may have to, like we talked about earlier, change them up or do them at home with family and do something else with your loved one that is placed. Take advantage of different areas in the community where your loved one lives. If, you're, if we were at home, we very likely would not go visit the bedroom. And that's what these are. In a place like we are, these are bedrooms. These aren't apartments. So let's not all go pile in the bedroom. Let's go get in the kitchen. Let's get in the dining room. Let's go in the patio. Let's go in the living room. We've got all kinds of places to visit. You can even reserve places to visit. You're in their home. This is where they live now. Enjoy the entire area. Participate in the community's planned events. That's another thing you can do. Come when there's a planned event. So if the community is having their holiday time, come up and have holiday time at that time. Then you're off the hook for trying to come up with something. Come then. Now, again, if your loved one is at home, and I'm just going to reiterate, try to have change, adjust your expectations. Try to have small gatherings. A change in environment can be really, really stressful. Involve your loved one through the day by allowing them to help with um, preparations and then stay as close to their schedule as possible. This one, again, I'm going to mention the blinking lights. Uh, be careful about artificial fruits or food flavored candles, like I mentioned before, plants that they might put in their mouth or take a bite of. You never know. I've seen it happen where people just pick up flowers and start to eat them and encourage your loved one to rest and always have a quiet place where they can rest. I had mentioned earlier about letting them help in the kitchen or put the ornaments on the tree. Let them do the task that they are capable of doing. Activities to enjoy with other people. I mentioned the reminiscence and these are things to tell other people ahead of time, but don't say the word remember because people tend to want to say, remember. And it's a habit. You have to break it. It's just a habit. Read the Christmas story together out of the Bible. Or again, watch those services on TV. So let's talk a little bit about traveling. If you're going to plan on traveling, and we're going to do some um, specifics. Be very realistic about what your loved one can and cannot do. And be very realistic about who you're doing this for. Because at the end of the day, I've heard too many caregivers after they've tried something and it hadn't worked out well, go, I was needing them to have one more Christmas at. I was wanting. And we make it about us and not about them. 
please try to make the trip short. Keep in mind that those changes in the routine is going to lead to some confusion. Have a third person with you if you can when you're traveling and talk to your loved one's doctor before taking a trip to make sure that they're even okay to take a trip. I always encourage you to do a staycation first if you're planning on staying in a hotel to make sure they're going to be okay in a hotel. Staycation means you go and stay in a hotel right down the road because sometimes they are perfectly fine during the day and then it is time to go to bed and they're not having it because this isn't my bed and this isn't my routine and schedule a lot of breaks. If you're driving, plan your route with a lot of stops. Make sure you've got your loved one's medications. Make sure you've got a change of clothes within easy reach and plenty of finger foods and a cooler with drinks and things like that. If you can, put your loved one in the middle of the back seat. That keeps them in your line of vision. If you're driving, it also keeps them away from the doors and you can put on child safety locks in the back seat. That's why it's good to have that third person if you can. If you're flying, you've got to think about, first of all, what are the airports going to be like at the holidays? Are they going to be able to sit still? How are they going to react to turbulence? What are they going to do in a crowd? Think about the size of a toilet on an airplane. If you're going to go get an aisle in a middle seat, try to fly mid-morning. That's usually uh, the lowest peak times. Contact TSA and let them know you're flying with someone with dementia and then call in advance for a wheelchair assist. Okay, what if your loved one doesn't use a wheelchair or doesn't want to? It's going to be easier to use the wheelchair assist and here's a therapeutic story. These wheelchair attendants are in training and they need volunteers to practice on. We're helping them. They're not helping us. They need to train on how to get somebody through the airport. Let's see if they can help us. Come on, let's go. I've used that one. Also, the only airline that I'm aware of that has dementia trained staff is Delta. They are located out of Atlanta and the Rosalind Carter Institute is in Georgia. If you're going to go on a train, lots of times there's lots of pretty views and you can get up and move around, but there's a lot of sounds and there's a lot of rocking motion. You also want to tell TSA if you're going on a train. During a trip, be prepared for confusion because this is something new. Try to have some quieter activities as the day is winding down. Make sure they get plenty of rest. Prepare for wondering. You can enroll in a program called Medic Alert Safe Return. I've given you the website there, medicalert.org. And I encourage you, take a picture of them every day so that you have on what they've got on today. You do not want to show the police their driver's license picture. They don't look like that. Nobody looks like their driver's license picture. God forbid they go missing. You've got a picture of them every single day and what clothes they have on. If you're staying in a hotel, let them know your loved one has dementia. You never know. They may get up in the night and be knocking on the doors. You don't know. How to take some of the stress out of the holidays. Please learn to say the word no. We've got to be realistic. If you're the one that's always cooked all of the Thanksgiving dinner, I learned to do this years ago. No, I'll do the meats and y'all better bring anything else you want to eat. Or Kroger, a honey baked ham makes beautiful Thanksgiving dinners. I've used them a couple of times for the whole thing. Is it the same? Nope. Does it work? Absolutely. You don't have to make everything from scratch. Be discerning and just choose one or two events to focus on instead of hitting every one of them. There are no have to events. I've had people say, but we have to. No, you don't. But we've always, well, you don't have to this year. You don't. Give yourself permission to say no. You've got to be realistic. You've got to keep using that positive self-talk. You've been doing it. They don't have to be perfect. Keep in mind what's important about the holidays. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's family is perfect. Families are going to change. Traditions are going to change. Some physical signs you've taken on too much. You might already be having these, but if you start having them during the holidays, fatigue, sleeplessness, if you're starting to withdraw or get headaches, or if you're having mu muscle tension, anxiety, gastrointestinal issues like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, 
or an increased heart rate, you are taking on too much. You got to step back. There's some behavioral changes that will tell you it's a signal that you've taken on too much. Look what Charlie Brown's saying there. I'm even too tired to cry. I know you felt like that. I felt like that. All caregivers, I think, have felt that way at some time. I'm so tired, I can't even do anything. But if we start having confusion ourselves or forgetfulness ourselves, or we're not paying attention to details, changes in eating and sleeping or exercise, if we are in a bad mood all the time, or we're always in that go mode, I'm always on. I've got one eye and one ear open. It doesn't matter what time, day or night it is. Increasing alcohol. Those are behavior changes that we've taken on too much. Make a to-do list. We can start it right now. Today's November 1st. I'm a list person. Got my sticky notes. Make a to-do list and then prioritize that list. Schedule your most demanding task during the morning hours and spread it out. Don't try to get them all done today. And then schedule an easy job after a difficult one so that you can mark some things off that list and make sure that you're taking breaks. Do some things by yourself. Get yourself a music list. I've got playlists on my phone. I bet I've got 12 or 15 different playlists for things. But get something that brings you, you might even have your own Christmas playlist. Stick to your budget. Try to spend quality time with your family. Just reminders what to focus on. There's a meaning to holiday time. It's love and sharing and peace and making time for others and giving and spreading cheer. It's not about perfection. Your family isn't perfect. They never have been. They're not going to be. And now we've got the disease of dementia as part of our family. Wow, I went fast. I went super fast. I'm even going to have time for questions. Um, remember that it's going to be different. Don't get caught up in all the commercialism. No one expects extreme achievement from you. Don't do it to yourself. Because usually the person who is setting the expectation on us, we're looking at them when we look in the mirror. We do it to ourselves. There's my information. If you have questions, I cannot believe I finished that 10 minutes early and it's a 90 minute program, but I was on a roll. I was going. Um, let me stop sharing and see if anybody has. You can put comments in chat. Uh, you can unmute and ask questions if anybody has any questions or comments. Jamie is going to send you a copy of this recording, a copy of all of the slides. Please share them with family and friends. Um, she's also going to send you information about if you need CEs, if you're somebody that needs CEs, and she'll send you our upcoming education programs. If you're here in town or you can be here for that in-person November 28th, Dealing with Dementia, that's our Rosalind Carter Institute program. It's four hours. I really encourage you to be part of that. To me, it's probably our best program that we do. Um, something in chat. Oh, great info. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to finish 10 minutes early because I was going so fast. Thanks. We'll see y'all next time.